Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Ati Allah Ati Rasul Mawlul Amri Minkum uh, Reminder for myself and abdukul aji so da'i fa miskinu zalim wa jahal But for the grace of Allah that we're still in existence. What do we have from our audience inshaAllah? Salaam to all the people online watching. Allah bless you, all your comments, all your shares, all the posts on on the social media platforms, alhamdulillah, inshaAllah the Instagram platforms, any anywhere there's social media sharing it and, and sharing the post inshaAllah Allah address everyone and bless everyone. MashaAllah the Muhammadan way uh, army is very strong, we're everywhere. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi. Walaykum Salaam Sayyidi, it's been extremely hard struggling with my nafs and ego in the last nine days. Despite how much I've been trying, I keep falling. Is it related to Prophet Sallallahu struggle from Mecca to Medina? <laughs> nice try. Yeah, that's that's a good one. Try to <laughs> try to when we fall short, try to penalize ourselves. That uh, not to give an excuse for it. No, this must be because Prophet was suffering in Mecca, Medina. No, this this suffering of Prophet is not something comparable. That's you know if you have real hardship and. You've been crushed for 13 years in, like in the lives of the shaykhs, they've been continuously crushed and crushed and crushed and crushed. So that's the inheritance. But when we just don't do what we need to do then punish yourself. Give your zakat, give sadaqah, make a well, do all these things that are a blessing but it's hard on the nafs. So that that is a, a great struggle, so a part of this whole process of the tariqah is to become in tune with yourself, your nafs and know how to punish it and how to reward it. So when you want to punish your nafs then you do service, you do khidmat, you, you do all these things to tame the nafs, right? So why when you ride the horse you have a whip? Well until you're good because they, when they're really good they just ride with… This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Their legs, with their knees they can control the animal. When they're not good, you're gonna find in their hand a whip. And they have to keep whipping each side so that the animal will do as the rider requests. So more fierce is the nafs of people. So what are you whipping it with? That's what's important. So if you just, oh well, yeah my nafs just didn't want to do it, maybe f let's find a historical figure and give it, it's like that. But no, it's that we have to punish the nafs. Do more service, do more khidmat, do this, do that and, and that becomes important in the tariqah to understand ourselves and uh, how to struggle against the self. It's very important because uh, one of the things that people want to come and do khidmat, they oh I want to serve, I want to serve, I want to serve. As soon as you give the opportunity to serve they don't serve, very dangerous. So. That's when you begin to know yourself and you know that you're playing with, with the, a dangerous reality. So it means that when you want to serve, you serve and now you're under the eyes of all of these realities. That's not the time to sit back and not serve, that's the time to step up and really serve. 
then you understand your nafs. So we've said that many times, all of a sudden somebody likes chocolate, you offer them chocolate, say, why did you offer me chocolate? I said, but do you like chocolate? So remember, why are you always offer me chocolate? So because they're not understanding now their nafs and how their nafs is starting to play with them. And that's when you have to, you know, fight your nafs, fight your ego. When you're called into service, you serve with your life and your death. Not your dunya comes first, nothing comes first, your service comes first. So the rest is just shaitan playing with you. So that's what's important and that's what, you know, separates the mice from the men. As soon as they understood that, they, they, their allegiance kicks in and they serve. And you know all you need is a few good men. You don't need thousands from around the world. Thousands may come and say they want to serve and by the time you're finished you got ten who are actually serving the tariqah and serving the shaykh's mission. It's okay that you want to come but at least you'll find out about yourself that you don't make it, you didn't sort of pass you know the recruiting level. It's like the army, I don't know if any of you have gone to army school or to army. <laughs> We, ha we had the fortunate ability to go to an army school. So as soon as you're in there, you know, you're, you're recruited in and they break you down at every chance and uh, do this, do 20, do 50. Now say like, eh, they're continuously bombarding you until you think you want to quit but they don't let you to quit. You know, they just want to break you down. But the same thing is for the nafs is that when we enter in, it's an opportunity for us, Allah to show us ourselves so that, you know, not to be defeated by ourselves because you entered into the fight and now you found out you're going to be defeated by your nafs. So that, that's not a good sign, that's why we said that, that's a dangerous sign. So the, the blessings of service is that as soon as you're called into service it has to be done, do it. And then that becomes the life of the shaykh, they're doing on, on you know many different levels and many different directions paying attention to everything and they're trying to train people like themselves that you know function on, on every level and that becomes a deep reality. But shaykh will have all these dunya responsibilities, yes but as long as you focus on dunya then your focus on akhirah is not there and that's not the way. Right? That's not the reliance, that's not the example of your shaykh. The example you have to follow from your shaykh is when you follow your khitmat, Allah takes care of your dunya, means facilitates things for you. Not that you just sit back and don't do anything, that's completely wrong. But as soon as you do a lot of service, you're deep into your khitmat, you're doing all these things, Allah opens things that you could never imagine. People that help you, people come facilitate, the opportunities for work that are, are not so intense means that your focus became heavens and the heaven focused on you. And that's what the shaykh is trying to get people to. But they'll never reach there if their focus is on dunya and say, oh well my dunya is going to fall and collapse. I said, well we haven't seen a dunya fall and collapse yet, it's still here, look everybody's still playing with it. So that's just shaitan making the fear of poverty, shaitan operates with fear. So if any type of fear comes to you that's just from shaitan. But the system that the shaykhs operate from is that their life is to focus on Allah and Prophet As a result everything comes flowing to them inshaAllah. So that's the same system, that's important. In, in especially in these days, do your service, do your service, do your service, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. How important it is to be crushed in the imitation Hajj to reach the black stone, Khafa reality. Please forgive me. How important is it? <laughs> yeah. That, that, you know when we, when we discuss these things, these are a lifelong process. So <clears throat> you're not going to get crushed one time otherwise most people would die if they go through that one event and Allah crushed them completely. Those that's up to Allah if He's going to do that to a, a servant. It can be very heavy that would be like uh, Sabra Ayyub, you know the Prophet Ayyub Ja, ya, Ayyub, Jake, ya, Ayyub is in English is 
What word in English? The three council don't know or you just keep smiling at me? Jacob, Jacob sir. Jacob is that you? Yes sir. Yes, Yaqub. <laughs> okay, the other three council. <laughs> Nobody dares? Sabra Ayyub, inshaAllah. The importance of Ayyub is what? That he had a lot and Allah's, Allah's wanted to test him. And the angel said, well he has a lot that's why he loves you so much, you gave him so much. He said, no this one if I crush him he's going to love me. And that becomes then the famous reality and story of patience is that he took everything away from this servant, his family, his children, his life, his wealth, his possessions and then his health and put him in such a severe difficulty that the angels were astonished and that his sincerity and worshipness was like no other. And as soon as Allah declared the test finished immediately restored his life, his wealth, his possession, his family, his children and his health all restored back by Allah's azimat. But for us our lives when we describe these stations and being crushed in the way of Prophet it's lifelong. So every time you get humiliated by somebody, say for the sake of this akhfa reality and the reality of Prophet I'm going to remain quiet. So show Prophet I have beautiful character. It's not one time you're going to be tested over and over and over and over and over by people of authority, people who count, people who you looked up to, everything, every type of difficulty comes and Allah wants to see beautiful character. And that becomes lifelong being crushed for the sake of Prophet and we described Nabi Musa went through that by taking the humiliation of Sayyidina Khidr That everyone has to go through that to reach to Prophet because this is Wahid al-Qahar. You want to enter into the oceans of Wahid and oneness then all identity has to be stripped. Qahar are crushing everything so that it's just one. You know, all the individuality has to be crushed out of it and it becomes just an ocean of light. So these are immense realities in which to strive and struggle for. But we start at the beginning for people, so people have to when they hear all of this they first have to what? Make their muraqabah. Did they do the muraqabah? Are they super strong in their connection is the key to everything. Otherwise how are you going to get to all these realities? You, you, muraqabah is like your, your train, a bullet train. You want to get on and, and go to all of these destinations. So, oh, I love all these stories and all these uh, realities of destinations, I'm going to just, I'm going to get there, I don't know how I'm going to hitchhike there. And it doesn't happen like that. Everything is based on making the connection to your, your rocket, your, your train. It's like a bullet train, as soon as you get on it take you right into that destination. But that you have to master how to make the connection and, and how to, to survive with that connection inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Ya Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Shaykh since I entered into tariqah I'm facing a lot of cockroaches as they were my biggest fear even while closing my eyes or in meditation thousands of them. What is the reality behind this? Cockroaches? Did we find out the name for, for Ayyub? Job. Job. Job or Job? Job. InshaAllah. Cockroaches? But character, I think we have in other talks that what is the punishment of the grave? It's the energy that we take with us, close the lights, put us in a box, you're there with your energy. People want to blame Allah 
oh Allah gonna punish you in the grave. It's not really Allah punishing you in the grave, it's Allah warning you, don't take those things in the grave with you as a warning. Like you tell your children, oh you picked up a lot of garbage and now you want to go shut yourself in the closet and turn the lights off? You're going to be surprised what starts to come out of your pocket and out of you know what you brought with you. So it's what we take with us in the grave that's dangerous. The bad character like roaches, you know all the, the, the droppings, the going around and gossiping we said before is like a rat and his droppings. If you ever see like a rat or a mouse somewhere they just make their droppings everywhere. That's what people get sick from the animal is not only the rat, he's not going to bite you that much because you're not chasing him but it's his droppings that make everything sick and everything contaminated. So same thing people begin to act like that, contaminate everyone with their speech, their actions, their gossiping. So then Allah showing these animals, these, these insects people have those characteristics. Wasp, they hurt people, they sting people, fox, they're too cunning, too, too sneaky, snakes, they're just evil and wicked and bad energy. So Allah is, is granting people to have a khalwa before the big seclusion. Means if they're meditating and, and doing their practices they can begin to see a lot of the manifestation of these creatures. And these are important to make your istighfar and, and to rid yourself of these energies while alive because we don't want to take those in the grave with us, inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Shaykh Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Shaykh, I converted to Islam a few years ago. I feel sometimes that around different people my energy level goes down and I can't understand why my mood is so low. How other people's energy can influence you? Sometimes when I'm around a specific person, I feel her bad energy and feel like she's always wants the worst for me. <clears throat> yeah, we have different teachings on the energy that you have to go through the energy book and read the energy book, read the meditation book. So you know the books that we have are part of the curriculum so it's important to read those. If, if you don't want to read them then go to the website and read the articles on energy. That's you know that's the whole 101 of everything we teach about energy and connection and, and how to make your connection inshaAllah. Those things are very important. Welcome, Sayyidi. Huh? Finished? No, are you continuing? <laughs> the next question. <laughs> next question, inshaAllah. <laughs> As salaamu alaykum, Sayyidi. Wa alaykum salaam wa rahmatullah. Is it okay to feel a jealousy towards service? It's uh, okay to feel. Jealousy and competition, in competition in religion that Prophet described that competition in religion is good. To compete with your brother and, and try to do more and better and, and to be more of service and other people be of service. So it encourages us to do more. But just to be envious that the person does and I don't do is not good. Envious character is not good but to compete and say, oh you know they're doing a lot, I should go out and do more. They got a lot of food this week, I'm going to try to get food in my area this week. So this is good, this is, gives people a himma and a, a zeal in which to accomplish more and to do more and to do good deeds. So alhamdulillah. That's why the people who when we post pictures they don't like it because they're not doing anything. So they're continuously reminded by the, uh, the SMC Muhammadan Way army that uh, look how much they're all doing and everybody else is just sitting on the couch not doing anything and then making comments on our posts. Oh why you have to show so many pictures? All oh, because that's all they can do. So it, you, you we're doing the right thing because this is also liked by Prophet is posted to encourage them. The people should feel bad they're not doing anything. And if they're doing good things then alhamdulillah they can go out and do more and do better. (coughs) 
السلام علیکم شیخ وعلیکم السلام و رحمت الله شیخ how much do we have to do to get accepted by Allah and Rasulullah life is crazy busy and going by so fast no shit that you be accepted <laughs> that's that's a good one you got to do 29.99 <laughs> and then you're safe i don't know what's the price <laughs> and what can people do <laughs> that's everybody has their own price with allah azawajal right you have a price for your salvation what is it you have a, a number on your zikr what is it you know everybody has a safe you know when you buy a safe you put a combination on it allah azawajal gave you a trust and upon that trust is a combination how much you would give how much you would do how much you would pray how much you you would make zikr how many salawats you would make how everything allah describes everything is written in kitab al mubin in the clear register so you you weren't sent here random that's what you got to get out of our minds thinking we're just a random creation that as soon as we were put into existence allah wrote within our what they call DNA, even now they find the DNA is your kitab. Isn't it amazing that Allah gives us a, a register? That you, you're already on a smart contract from heavens and everything was written on that contract, everything you would do. And if you went the bad direction you'll never reach that contract because shaitan veered you in the wrong. But if you move towards the right and then Allah nudge you towards guidance and then Allah nudge you now get your tasbih well then you have a certain code you have to have reached, 25,444,000 Allahs, 24,444,000 salawats for example and you would have made those salawats and at that time your heart clicked. Because this was your trust and when Allah says, we offered to them and they said, Samin qalu bala and we said, yes. So Allah offered these things to us and we said, yes. And we'd come to the earth and I would give this, I would do this, I would serve this, I would be with him, I would do like this and everything was written. You can't be with somebody that has not been written for you to guide you. You have to reach towards that guidance. You can't do or achieve anything that you didn't achieve what Allah has written for you to achieve. So means our life is about doing as much as possible. There is no you know 29.99 minimum that you can get in and you know I, I'm coming through the bargain door of paradise and I just want to do the, the minimum. It is about zeal and himmah in which to do the most that we can do save ourselves from these difficulties that are coming. Especially now when you see everything everywhere, disclosure coming, you know people texting, my kids were texting, oh they're, they're having a, a conference on UFOs. I said, well didn't I tell you that they were going to disclose themselves, oh come on what are you talking about? I said, no these are the jinn, they're going to actually come in one of these conferences to scare people and to, to shock people. So this is just a matter of time. So with all of that you don't think that people would be busy and trying to do their zikr, trying to do their salawats, trying to, to learn, trying to write, trying to, to achieve these protections and these blessings for themselves, their family and their communities inshaAllah. <coughs> Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. 
your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.